And they need to have that vision of the Word of God. They need to have the Word preached to them that they might be saved. Uh, now notice in verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand. What? Do you hear the Holy Spirit speaking? He's saying we're living in the last days of the last days. The end of all things is at hand. Jesus is coming. It won't be long from now. Hear what he's saying. He said, be ye therefore sober. Now the word sober here is not talking about liquor and, and drinking and that kind of drunkenness. He's talking about sober-mindedness. He's talking about being level-headed, being sane in your mind to think correctly. Be sober in how you look at things in this world. Don't be like a drunk out there that just doesn't think clearly, but you need to think through these things and realize that the end of all times is near. Jesus is coming. Therefore, we ought to be very sober-minded in how we look at life and how we spend the time that we have in this world. And notice what he said, and watch there unto with prayer. Watch under prayer. Now, when you hear the words watch and pray, that usually speaks of doing about sleep and pray. When you fast and pray, that means you do without food and spend that time you would have been eating to pray, fast and pray. When he says watch and pray, almost always he's talking about the watches of the night. Uh, the, the Jewish people had uh, four watches in the night from 6 o'clock in the evening to 9 was the first watch. From 9 to 12 was the second watch. The third watch was from midnight to 3 o'clock in the morning. The fourth watch was from 3 to 6 o'clock. And when you gave up that time that you would have been sleeping to pray, you watch and pray. You fast and pray and you watch and pray. God's people need to consider how much more important it is to pray than it is to eat or sleep. That's what he's teaching us. We need to be a people of prayer. We need to pray all with all prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. We need to continue instant in prayer. We need to be a people who pray. Jesus spake a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't ever give up. Keep on praying until the answer comes. And so he said, watch under prayer. Notice the next verse. And he said, above all things. What? Above all things? Above every other thing? Above all things? Wow, this must be really important. Look what it says. Have fervent charity among yourselves. Now the word charity here is the word that is translated, it's out of the Greek language, it's agapeia. It's a, it's a word that means divine love, special love, a powerful love, a self-sacrificial love. The word is translated, char charity here is translated love in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, it's translated in 1 John 4, 8. I hear it is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be uh, the atoning sacrifice, the, the propitiation for our sins. And you see, this word means we need to love one another and fervently love one another. Now again, love is, is that Holy Spirit wrought uh, uh, characteristic in our lives that makes us want the very best for another person, whatever it costs us. It makes us want, if I love you, I want the very best for you, and I'm willing to pay whatever it uh, costs to get the best for you. That's love. That's what it means. God so loved that he gave his only begotten saying that was the best possible thing that we could ever have. And when we love one another, we were, we are going to want the very best for the other person and not consider the cost to ourselves. We want the best for them. And, and if I love you, I want the best for you. I want you to have the best services, the best preaching, the best singing. I, I, I want you to have the best thing in your lives. I, I want you to have the victory and the power of God and the joy of God. And I want your lives to be really worth living for the glory of God and to have that overflowing joy that God wants you to have. And uh, if you love one another, you'll want what's best for the other. And you'll not consider how much it's going to cost you. You're going to be looking to how you could be a blessing to somebody else. Now notice what he says. Have fervent love. Now that's a pretty powerful love. 
Uh, we get our word fever from it, actually. Uh, and he's talking about something that is strong. It's fervent. It's a dedicated, consecrated love. It's a love that's not in easily discouraged. It's a love that just keeps on loving no matter the circumstance. It's a fervent love that we have one to another, brethren. I want you to think just a moment before we go on from here and just look at yourself just a moment and think, do I love that person that's sitting down the aisle from me there? Do I love that person behind me, in front of me, around here? Do I love them so much that I want the very best for them? 